Hey kids and family, this is Andrew from the Marion Public Library and I'm a special guest today. With me this is, of course, Swoop. Alright, so we are here to invite you guys and say hey for our Summer Reading Club 2021 Tales and Tales. So this is the kickoff party, this is the big event. Um, we're going to have a lot of fun activities, um, a lot of fun videos that you're going to be able to participate in and watch. Um, so definitely check those out. Those are going to be available through our website, MarionPublicLibrary.org our YouTube channel, our Facebook. Um, so definitely check out the videos. We're gonna have a funny, very goofy puppet show, um, and a lot of story times, a lot of fun, interesting things. Uh, so the main thing I wanna mention briefly is that for the 2021 Summer Reading Club, Tales and Tales, kids are gonna be able to earn free books. So if you guys come in starting on June 1st, you can pick up a bingo sheet, and if you complete these activities, um, the whole sheet, and turn them back in, you get a free book. You're going to be able to get two. So you can turn one in and then get another one, come back, get another free book. So that's one option. And then you're also going to have Let's Read 20 um, as well, where you're just going to read for two weeks for 20 minutes. Not too long, not too bad. 20 minutes a day, fill this out, bring it back, get a free book, and then take another one, bring it back, get a free book. So it's not a bad deal. So definitely, guys, I encourage you, come to the library. Pick out your favorite book, pick out a new book, and participate. Also, in July, there's a certain someone's special birthday, I'm not going to say who, is coming up, and definitely check out what activities we have planned for that. So, what we have in store for you is a awesome puppet show. Um, this is our take on the story of the tortoise and hare, with a couple spins here and there. Um, I hope you enjoy it, it's very campy, very goofy. Um, you know, telling stories is a great way for parents to teach kids lessons and values, and it's a great way to engage kids in learning and wanting to read. Um, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. It was time for the annual animal race, and Rabbit was dreading it. Every year, the other animals always expected Rabbit to run because he was so fast. Rabbit liked running sometimes, but he hated having everyone watching him, and he would much rather sit under a tree and finish his new book. He could not wait to find out that his favorite hero, Super Sloth, would finally find a way off the desert planet and defeat the evil King Jella once and for all. Meanwhile, Turtle was so excited She'd been training all year long in secret, and she really, really wanted to race with her friends. Last year, the an other animals told Turtle that she was not fast enough, and they talked her into being the person who hands out those tiny cups of water to the runners as they go by. Well, not this year. This year, Turtle was going to be on that track showing everyone how hard she worked. She could not wait. Are you excited about the race, Rabbit? Well, actually, I kind of thought this year it might be nice to sit out and read instead. What? Not race. You have to race, Rabbit. You're the fastest runner we know. I guess so. But I have a stack of books I've been waiting to read. Not me. I've been waiting all year to race you, Rabbit. Let's get to the starting line. Good luck, Rabbit. Good luck, Turtle. Kaka! Racers, start. Yeah, good luck, Tortoise. You'll need it. Actually, Crow, Turtle is not a tortoise. All tortoises are turtles. But not all turtles are tortoises. According to my book, Learning to Care for Reptiles and Amphibians, tortoises live in dry areas. Turtle lives by the pond, so she is not a tortoise. She is a reptile, though, just like snakes, lizards, and crocodiles. Huh. That's very interesting, Rabbit. But the racers have left you behind. You better move if you want to win. Whoa! Look how fast that hare can run. 
actually, I am not a hare. According to my book, Cottontails and their relatives, rabbits and hares are two different animals. Rabbits are smaller and their babies stay in a nest on the ground for a few weeks until their fur grows in and their eyes open. Hares and rabbits are different animals, just like goats and sheep are different. Here's a joke. When is a rabbit not a rabbit? When it's a jackrabbit. A jackrabbit is actually a hare. <laughs> well, that is very interesting, rabbit. But now you are way behind. You're going to lose the race. I didn't really want to race anyways. I've had so much fun talking about my books, and that's what I really like to do. I'm going to go read until the race is over and finally finish my book. conclusion, the annual animal race came to an end. Both rabbit and turtle accomplished their goals and lived happily ever. Wait, who won? I won, but we couldn't celebrate without you two. Now let's party. Wait, what about the moral of the story? Oh, hmm. Okay, um, how about you don't have to be good at something to like doing it? Ah, maybe. Having fun is more important than winning? Boo! How about just because you're good at something doesn't mean you always have to do it? Hmm, I'd rather be reading? Yeah, but what I love to do is be outside and learn to try new things. Okay, okay. How about read, learn, enjoy? Oh! oh. Read, read, learn, learn enjoy. enjoy! Hi, this is Whitney with the Marion Public Library. Welcome to Tales and Tales, our summer reading club. I know you've already gotten to see some fun stuff, but I have an interactive story. You are going to help me tell the story of the three little pigs. So there's gonna be some hand movements for you to do. Anytime that I say pig, you're gonna go like this and you're gonna go. Can you do that? All right, and every time that I talk about the wolf, you're gonna make wolf fangs. Can you make fangs? Awesome. And we're going to talk about the three little pigs' houses. There was the straw, there was the sticks, and there were the bricks. So just get ready because you are going to help me tell this story. So once upon a time, there were three little pigs. What does the pig say? Now those three little pigs were very lazy little pigs. So those three little pigs needed to go out and build their very own house of their own. Now the first little pig was a very lazy little pig and he didn't want to work at all. So he decided he would build his house out of straw. So he went out and built his house out of straw and it took him about an hour and he was done. Now the second little pig wanted a house as well and he decided to build it out of sticks. So the second little pig decided to get some sticks and he built his house and it took him about two hours and then he was done. Now the third little pig, a very hard working little pig decided his house had to be very strong and so he decided to build it out of bricks 
and he built and he built and he took his time and it took him a couple weeks and finally he had a really strong house made of bricks. Now all the three little pigs were very happy with their house until one day along came a big bad wolf and he saw a house made of straw and he knocked on the door and he said little pig little pig let me come in and the first little pig said not by the hair of my chinny chin chin so the wolf said then i'll huff and i'll puff and i'll blow your house and then he took one giant breath <gasps> When he blew and the straw went flying because seriously, straw for a building material? What was that pig thinking? Well, I'll tell you what the pig thought. He thought, ah! And he ran wee, 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 all the way to the second little piggy's house, which was made of sticks. And he knocked on the door and he said, let me in, let me in, let me in. So they opened the door and they slammed it. And along came the big bad wolf. He knocked on the door and he said, little pigs little pigs let me come in and those two little piggies said not by the hairs of our chinny chin chin and the wolf huffed and he puffed and he took two giant breaths <sighs> and the sticks went flying because sticks for a house what were you thinking and those two little piggies said, ah! They went wee, 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 all the way to the third little piggy's house, which as you remember was made of big strong bricks. They knocked on the door and they said, let us in, let us in. And so he let them in and they slammed the door. And along came the big bad wolf. The wolf knocked on the door and he said, little pigs little pigs let me come in and the three little piggies said not by the hairs of our chinny chin chin so the wolf huffed and he puffed and he took three giant breaths <sighs> until he needed a minute but nothing happened because that big strong house was made of bricks and wolf resistant that is very important and those three little pigs went ha 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 and the wolf got really mad until he looked up on the roof and what do you think he saw on the roof of that house he saw a chimney so he climbed up climb up climb up he climbed up and he started to go down the chimney and the three little pigs said until the third little pig, you remember the really hardworking little pig said, soup's on. And he pushed the soup pot under the fireplace and he turned it up. And as that wolf climbed down, his tail touched that bubbling soup and he went, ay, 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 and he flung out into the forest and he never bothered a pig again. And the three little pigs lived happily ever, ever after in their big brick house. You guys did great. Thank you for helping me tell that story. The end. All right, hi everybody. My name is James Anderson and I'm the naturalist for the Marion County Park District. And I'm here at the Marion Public Library and I wanna talk about animal tales. So I wanna just talk about some of the unique features and different things that animals use their tails for because a lot of you think that tails are just used for wagging but you'll be really surprised that animal tails do a lot more than just that so I brought a lot of fun stuff with me today so I'll kind of start over here so you're probably familiar with the good old peacock right when they display themselves they're making a beautiful band tail and they're telling other male peacocks that hey stay away from me stay away from my girls this is my lamb and we have an example like that here in Marion County. This is a turkey fantail. They do that same thing. So again, they're displaying themselves and they're showing that, hey, again, this is my territory, this is my female, and uh, that will usually tell the other male to stay away. Now, another way on how tails can kind of help communicate with 
uh, other organisms is you're probably looking at this guy, the stinky guy, right? Ooh, PU, the good old skunk. Well, first thing they'll do when, when you see them is when they lift up their tail, they're gonna say, stay away from me. Now you're probably familiar with rattlesnakes, right? They're basically the same thing. They're making that nice rattling sound to warn predators or threats that if you get close to me, I will strike you. So this guy right here, this is a river otter. And if you look, it's a pretty long guy, but look at his tail. His tail makes up half of his body length. And it's kind of like a rudder of a boat. It helps them move in creeks and streams. So without their tails, they really couldn't move very well. So next we have opossums. So opossums, if this guy was alive, he would have a long kind of pinkish grayish tail and they would hang upside down when they're younger. But as they get older, their tails can't really support their weight. Their back feet are like our hands. They have an opposable thumb used for grasping on. So that's pretty cool that the opossum has that really neat feature. And I know you're probably looking at this guy. Um, I named him George, this uh, great horned owl. And kind of like with the turkey and peacock, when they are threatened, especially when they're juveniles, they'll puff up and they will display their nice fan tail to say, stay away from me or I will peck at you. Now next, we got squirrels. So squirrels, as you see, they have those long, long bushy tails. Now their tails are very, very important because they do a lot of different things. So when the squirrel is jumping from tree to tree, he's gonna be using his tail for balance. If it's raining outside, he's gonna use that tail to keep him dry. And if it's cold out, it's gonna be a nice little blanket. But just like the turkey and the owl that we talked about, they also use their tails for communication. When it's kind of nice and long and straight, that's telling other squirrels that it's okay, the environment's okay, there's no danger. But you probably have seen this outside where they're kind of flickering their tails up and down and they're making that little chatting sound. They're saying, hey, there's danger. We have to be careful. So that's pretty cool on how squirrels use their tails. Now, what's also neat, uh, what I have over here, that sometimes we can tell what kind of animal it could be by its tail. So sometimes when you're out in the wild, you may see our wild canines like our uh, coyotes and foxes. But when they're running, sometimes it's hard to tell. Well, here's a really cool, fun tip. For the coyote, when they're running, they uh, run with their tails down. So if you ever have like a pet dog, if it was bad, you might have to yell at it. Well, it's kind of the same thing, but dogs, they run with their tails up. So that's pretty cool. Now our fox species that we have here in the state of Ohio, yes, obviously the colors can be a big difference, but sometimes red foxes like this guy they can be gray. So they can, so a good way to uh, identify uh, the red fox, he'll have black tip tails, or ears, excuse me, and a white tip tail. And gray foxes will have a black tip tail and white tip ears. So that's a really cool way to distinguish both uh, species. So now this big guy right here, yeah, the good old beaver. So these, so this beaver, uh, really great. Um, if this guy was alive, he would have that weird, big, square looking tail. And they use their tails for making lodges and dams. So I know it kind of looks silly, but they kind of look, look, looks like they're slapping their butts onto their lodges and dams. Well, that's kind of helped pack the mud down. Uh, so it keeps it really tight. So the lodger dam does not break. Also too, just like some of the other types of animals that we've talked about, they also will use their tails for communicating. When they flap it up on the water, they're telling other beavers that, hey, there's danger around. So then we have some animals like scorpions who will use their tails to catch their prey. And that's very important because these guys aren't really fast moving. So they may have to trick their prey to get in close or sneak up on and bam, they're gonna use that nice sharp like tail to capture their prey and they'll inject those toxins into their prey so they're able to catch them. Now you might see animals like bison, cows, horses that have really really long tails. Well their tails are used to wipe off dirt 
are also flies. Those pesky flies that are on them, always biting them, always nagging them. And uh, that's really important, especially for these guys, since they're in big open areas, there's not really a lot of room to hide up in the trees. So when you're kind of out in the grassland area, you know, you're kind of vulnerable to things like flies and a lot of other pest species. So that's why their long tails are very, very important. So this little guy that I'm holding right now on top of this cup, this is a dragonfly nymph or a baby dragonfly. So a lot of our macro invertebrates, not all of them, but some of them like dragonflies and, and uh, damselflies, they will use kind of like their tails. And I know their tails are not really uh, easy to see like some of the other critters we just talked about, but kind of right where my finger is, that's what I guess you could call the tail. And what is really cool about dragonflies is when they're in this stage, they shoot air out of their tails or their butts. It's called a jet propulsion and it helps them move around the pond environment because there's all kinds of critters that are trying to eat them from small tadpoles to turtles to fish, uh, you name it, it's fair game. But also too, they use that jet propulsion to catch their prey and things like really small tadpoles and, um, and other insects as well. So I brought a little container with me, and this is just a, uh, a, an example of some different types of critters you can find in a pond environment. And I don't know if you can see, but a lot of that stuff that's floating in there, those are tadpoles, some frog tadpoles. And what's really cool about that is it's funny when they're in this stage, they have their tails, but as they metamorphosize or change into their adult form, they lose their tails. Now, some of our other amphibians, like salamanders and lizards, uh, they will keep their tails um, all of their lives. Now, lizards and salamanders on some species, they will actually uh, sometimes have a very brightly colored tail. And if there was a predator to step on it, it will break off. And it was really cool is it's able to regrow. So that's pretty cool for amphibians and reptiles to have that really cool feature. But again, as you're seeing, uh, there's those tadpoles. There's also damselflies, which are like dragonflies, but they're a little bit smaller. So I don't know, I don't know if you can see but how they're moving, but again, they're squirting that air out their tail region. So that's pretty cool. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed that program. Hopefully you learned some different types of fun facts about animals and their tails. So my challenge for you this summer, as you're here at the Marion Public Library, as you're checking out your books, find books that are about animals, not just here in Marion County, but also across Ohio or across the United States or the world, and find your own nature discoveries or your own animal tales. So have fun, be safe, most of all, go out and explore your Marion County parks. I'm naturalist James Anderson, and I'll see you all next time. Hey kids and families, this is Andrew from the Marion Public Library. So I'm gonna show you guys something cool today. So the Marion Public Library has a summer reading club kickoff event, craft kit supplies. So this is gonna be for our summer reading club about tales and tales. So you are going to get this packet here and there's gonna be some really cool things inside this packet. So real quick, I'm gonna show you. So you're gonna have this summer reading club Log, and this is going to have dates of really cool events that are going to be coming up. So definitely check this one out. And then inside here, we're going to have information about different crafts we're going to do. And this will have detailed instructions of how to do the crafts and step by step. And you can watch this video. I suggest doing them both. All right, so I am going to focus on, I'm going to put all this stuff to the side, the beaded pipe cleaner dragonfly. All right, so what you need for this, we're gonna have three pipe cleaners, and we're gonna have 11 to 12 beads, depending. I have 12 with me. And then over on the side, I have two Google eyes. All right, so the first step we're gonna do, is real simple. Take one of your pipe cleaners, just like this, and you are going to fold it in half, just like that. Try to make it even at the end. Doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be perfect. So, once you have it folded, you're going to take your beads and you are very carefully going to slide them through just like that. 
Now the key is don't go all the way to the end because it's going to fall off. So just may maybe about half an inch towards the end. So you can, the cool thing about this is you have different colored beads and you can kind of make any design you want to. So for this, for time purposes, I'm just going to kind of throw them all on here. And we are going to get to the next step. So this is super easy. So just this part here, we're already almost halfway done. Um, this is a cool craft that you can show your friends. Um, you can play with, you can put it on, oh, you can put it up in your room, whatever you want to do with it. Or you can have a competition with your friends or family and see who can put the beads on the quickest. Because as you can tell, I might lose that competition. All right, we got... So the trick is, so I use all my beads except one. So keep one bead separate. So I'm going to put this over here. Okay, so this is the dragonfly's body that we have right here. So now I'm going to take another pipe cleaner and we're going to bend this into a circle. Does not have to be a perfect circle, just as close as you can get it. And I'm going to overlap. So you guys see that overlap right there? And now we're going to twist it so it stays connected together. So just twist those two at the end. All right, now we have my lopsided circle. So once you have the circle, you're going to pinch it just like this. And what do you guys think this will be? So this is going to be our wings. This is the first set of wings and it looks lopsided now. It's not perfectly straight. I'll fix that later. So now we're going to take our wings and we're going to put it on the body just like this. And how we connect it, so here's the wings, is you're gonna kind of pinch right in the middle and you're gonna twist the wings about two to three times each on each side. Okay, and then kind of mess with them, make them a little pretty. So you can see it's starting to look more like a dragonfly. Okay, last pipe cleaner, same thing. We're gonna make a circle and then We're gonna bend it at the top. So there's my lopsided circle. And same thing, we're gonna pinch it. So here's our second set of wings. Because dragonflies have two sets. And we're gonna put it back on the body just like we did before. Oh, and here we go. All right, so make sure, unlike what I just did, make sure it is tight. So that way it does not come apart like mine just did. Okay. So that is super tight now. So pinch it, kind of shape it a little bit. So there's my second set. And now I'm going to slide this onto the dragonfly, just like that. And same thing we did the first time. So pinch where it connects and twist. Okay, so there's her wings, and like I said, you can kind of shape them however you want to. They can be thin, they can be large, doesn't matter. All right, so now we're going to take our last remaining bead, and you're going to put it through. On the opposite side, you put all the other beads. Just like that. Okay, now... You'll see the tie side where you have these two ends here. What you're going to do is you're going to put them together like that, and then you're going to kind of roll them in like a spiral. It doesn't have to be pretty. Same thing with the wings. Just as close as you can get to a little spiral, and this is going to be the dragonfly's head. Okay, so I'm going to put this down. So there's my head. And now you're going to take your Google eyes. Now with these, I use glue, I just use a glue stick to add glue to them. And then you're just gonna press them wherever you want the eyes to be. So I want them right up front. And kind of press down and hold maybe about three seconds. Okay, and here is my dragonfly. All right, great job guys. 
So we are on to our second activity in the craft bag. So this is a lot of fun. We are gonna be doing animal silhouette watercolors. So parents, before you freak out, these are washable colors. So we probably won't make a mess in the clothes or anything, but I know how me and kids are and we like to be, make big messes, which is okay. All right, guys, so what you're gonna have in your kits, you're gonna have this, these paint supplies, a paintbrush, a piece of paper, and then an animal silhouette. Mine's an owl, yours might not be, it might be another cool animal. Um, so the key thing is before you start, so notice, I have this big piece of paper keeping this table from getting all messy. I suggest you do the same. So talk to mom and dad, figure out a plan, whether you use newspaper, whatever it might be, to make a clean surface so you don't make that big of a mess. Also, watercolors, what do you think we need? We need water for sure. So I have my cup of water, because anytime you start a different color or you're using a color too much, you wanna dip this brush back in the water to keep those colors uh, mixing well. All right, so the key thing is, so I have my animal silhouette. You wanna keep this as still as possible. So you can put it anywhere in the paper. You can make any design you want. Um, I'm just gonna put a bunch of colors together that I think are cool with the owl. You might want to make like a, if you have an owl, maybe a forest environment. Maybe you wanna make a barn, whatever you wanna do. This, this is your art kit, guys. So for me, so I'm gonna put my owl right here. And your, your fingers are gonna get a little messy. That's okay, guys. Just try to hold it down as smooth as possible. So first step, water. And then I'm gonna go with, I think I'm gonna go with some colors like it's sunset, because that's when owls are active. Once the sun's setting, they're nocturnal. So they're gonna start coming out. So the key is, see how I'm holding the head down? Is you're gonna paint over. And look, I need more water. You can paint over the silhouette, that's okay, because when you take your animal away, it's gonna make a cool design under. And now, I'm gonna mix some purple in here. So purple and black. And I need more purple, because that's way too dark. Okay, there we go. And then you spread it out. And you can make, like I said guys, you can make any design you want. So you might want to put your owl up in a tree. So you could paint a tree first and then have that owl kind of chilling up in a tree, just hanging out. Or you could put your owl on top of the library, kind of like Swoop, kind of how Swoop hangs out on top of the library. But the key is, guys, you're just gonna try to keep this paper down. And it doesn't, as you can see, my fingers are getting too messy, so it's not too bad. And use whatever colors you want. Use your favorite color. Use whatever you think is gonna fit that forest environment. I'm just gonna kind of put a bunch of colors together and we'll see how cool that looks. So we got red, we got purple, we got brown, green, yellow. We got a whole bunch of different colors. And make sure guys, you get every little white space around your silhouette or it won't show up as good. So I have some white right here and I'm trying to fill in all these spots. If this gets wet and this gets paint on it, that's fine because you're gonna pick that up any minute. So I'm gonna get all near this area. And I'm not gonna paint my whole page. I'm just gonna paint around it so you guys can get the general idea of how this is gonna look. Because this is a really cool, really cool activity uh, and that I think you guys are gonna have a lot of fun with. And when you're done, you can do another. You can go on your computer with the parent's permission to help. You can print out other animals you might wanna do. You can try your own other watercolors, maybe of your pets at home. And you know, think of maybe what your favorite animal is. So for me, and see guys, I moved it a little bit, so I'm gonna move it back. It's okay, it happens. So for me, my favorite animal is a gorilla. So maybe think of what your favorite animal might be, and you can kind of do that silhouette. So I'm almost done. Like I said, guys, you wanna fill the whole page in. You wanna get as much color as you want on here. I'm just showing you, so I'm just gonna combine a couple colors get my purple and blue going together. And I'm gonna swipe, get a little black in here too. Because the more colors you use, I think the cooler it's gonna look when it comes out. All right, so one last thing guys. Then we're gonna lift it up and we're gonna see how this looks. Make sure we get all our edges. 
Make sure you're holding it down the whole time. All right, so, so this is how it looks before. And then we're gonna remove our owl. And as you see, it leaves a really cool print. Um, so even if it smudges a little, so you can tell mine moved a little bit, that's fine. I think it looks really cool. It makes it unique to however you wanna paint. My favorite animal, second favorite animal is a lion. So I'll show you one that I made a couple weeks ago. So this is a lion I made, and this is what it can kind of look like if you do the whole page. So like I said, have fun with your kits. If you have leftover paint, which you should, you know, uh, with parent permission, print out other animals you wanna do, and you know, just have fun with it, guys. Thanks for joining us, everyone. We had a great time with our puppet show, our craft, and a visit with James Anderson from the Marion County Parks District. So thanks for joining us. Please come to the library, pick up your reading logs, and get reading. Bye-bye.